Hello, I'm Margaret and this is Mag Sing Along. Today, I'm going to give tips on how to sing high notes. Now, before revealing the big secret behind how to sing high notes, I first want to talk about four things you shouldn't do when approaching high notes. Number one, don't push. A lot of times we think we need to push our high note out and squeeze it out with all our might, but that is not the way to do it. Number two, don't get misaligned. Sometimes when we sing, we think, again, we need to do something special to get that high note out, and we accidentally misalign our neck or our jaw or our back, things that affect our instrument in a negative way. So you want to make sure you stay aligned. Number three, don't close off your throat right before reaching a high note. That might be kind of obvious, but you would be surprised how often that happens. Number four, keep exhaling as you sing your high note. Again, pretty obvious because singing is exhaling with your vocal folds vibrating. Uh, but a lot of times when we are trying to sing a high note, out of fear, we seem to stop exhaling or freeze and um, that's not what you want to do. That high note needs air to survive. So make sure you keep exhaling. And now the big secret behind how to sing a high note is to do nothing. Just sing it like it's a regular note in your song. Now let's talk about that for a second. What is a high note really? But just another note in your song in your range, I assume, that uh, you're having trouble making sound good. So you need to think about how does my instrument work to make sound and, and use it the way it's built to be used. Follow the four not to do's that we talked about and just make sure that you are relaxed when you try to sing this note. Now, yes, there are some quick tricks to improving these high notes, especially if they're very high, and I'll talk about that. And then there's also some long-term things you can do to improve your higher range. Okay, so quick tricks to singing high notes, and I'm talking about really high notes. Um, first one is chin up slightly, just that, not up there, just a little bit higher, and this helps create the right space you need inside your vocal tract for really high notes. Now, the other thing you can do is what I like to call bite the apple, that face. It helps kind of um, lift the soft palate, which is the back of the roof of your mouth, when it lifts a little bit, it creates a cool acoustic effect so that your sound waves can hit your cheekbone and get a nice amplification. Uh, but it also helps create that right space it needs for that really high frequency. Um, the other thing you can do is bend your knees just a little bit, not significantly. Uh, but just a teeny bit, and that helps you engage your pelvic floor muscles, which are right below the belly, and they kind of act like a second diaphragm to your diaphragm, which is above your belly. And of course, the diaphragm is also a very important muscle for supporting your air, but the pelvic floor can engage as well, especially as you exhale, to give you just a little bit extra support. So that's why you might see a lot of rock singers, for example, do this motion with their microphone. See how they are chin up, biting apple, bending knees. That's actually a way to get a nice high note out for rock singing. Now for classical singing, it's also very similar, but everyone's a little different when you go into the opera world but it's the same thing in terms of getting pelvic floor support. You'll see them using their legs and sometimes some singers will do that bite the apple face. 
They might not lift their chin as significantly as a rock star, but they're definitely making minor adjustments based on the pitch they're singing. Now, I think it's important for you to get an example of what I'm talking about. So I've chosen a small portion of the song, I'll Be There, sung by Mariah Carey and Jackson 5 and a whole bunch of other people. And I think this part represents um, classical singing as well as pop singing. So you'll see why. So it goes like this. You know I'll keep Now you'll see I had to bite the apple, lift my chin a little bit, and you saw me kind of lose some inches there because uh, I was bending my knees. And um, that's what makes it singable for me. Now, if I didn't do those things, I will show you what it looks like. You know I keep So you saw there that my sound got a little bit trapped in my nose and sinuses because I wasn't quite making the right space in my mouth for that really high note. So the sound kind of had to go somewhere else and it didn't sound as powerful. I also didn't bend my knees to engage my pelvic floor so I lacked a little bit of support as well. Now it's not the end of the world, I still reached the note. but it sounds a lot better when you do those three tricks. Now some long-term things you can do to improve your higher range is just basic exercise of your higher range. And that includes just singing up there all the time. Or you can also do vocal exercises like lip trills, where you basically just blow air through your lips um, if that's tricky, you can also tongue trill or roll your R. Um, but if that's also kind of tricky, you can also just do hum. Mm. But watch out for excessive jaw or tongue tension as you hum. I recommend chewing mm. as you hum mm. to combat the tendency to want to grip as you do it. And you'll notice I'm doing sirens. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do sirens, you can sing songs up there on hum, lip trill or tongue trill. Uh, you just want to exercise. So explore your higher range and do it every day or every other day just to give it that, um, that strength. And those are a few tricks to singing high notes. I'm Margaret and this was Mag's Sing Along. You can join me online here at Mag's Voice for more tips on singing.